Hello, and welcome back to yet another episode of Absolutely No One Asked Me To Do This, But I Did A Thing, and Therefore I'm Going To Show You The Thing. And on today's episode, I very briefly hopped on the bandwagon of people getting upset over the Magic School Bus redesigns. For anyone who's new to that whole dispute, basically, um, capitalistic greed ruined absolutely everything that had to do with those characters' designs. The kids were all whitewashed and freaking made to look basically exactly the same from one another. And also, like, from the very few episodes that I watched of them, also kind of got the personalities of the characters wrong. Anywho, for anyone who's still fuming over that, I have decided to give you a peace offering and draw these kids slightly redesigned and in my very expressive style. I hope you'll enjoy that. Now let's start on the first two characters that we see up here. The absolute little balls of chaos themselves, Carlos and Wanda. Carlos is a bit bald right now, but don't know- no, there, there we go, Carlos is no longer bald. We, we've won. Everything's fine now. I don't have too much to say about Carlos, I really didn't change him all that much. I just added a few more details to his hoodie. One of the things that I really did with the redesigns is like, you know, the original style that the Magic School Bus kids were in was definitely better than what we have now. But honestly, it also kind of makes my eyes bleed. The color choices, um, I don't like them. Though it's very much probably not their fault. I don't know how the production process went for, like, how shows were made back then. But I'm pretty sure they only had, like, a certain, like, number of colors that they could work with. Anywho, colors come later though. I do want to talk about Wanda a little bit more because oh my god, they really did her dirty. Like when I first looked at like the lineup of the new kids, I was like, where is Wanda? Because like I couldn't find her. I was like, where is Wanda? Where is my little chaos gremlin freaking gum bungee jumping freaking freaking getting her friend almost killed trying to find her toad freaking? <laughs> where is this bundle of chaos? Where is she? And then I find this freaking uh, white bitch with freaking hair and a headband. What? Wanda would not wear a headband. She would wear the headband for about three seconds and then use the headband as a weapon or as a tool. I don't know what she's doing with a headband, but she's not wearing it in her hair. I am also very upset over the fact that Wanda's eyes in that art style, like, they don't look any different. From all the other white kids. What is this? But yeah, I was very excited to recapture the chaotic energy that is Wanda. Before I go any further though in terms of explaining the characters, I do kind of want to explain a little bit of a writing thing. You guys know me at this point, I can't stop myself. I start redesigning things and then I also start redesigning the story. <laughs> is that the right word? Re rewrite Rewriting the story. Anywho, I grossly overthought the whole implications of Miss Frizzle's class. Miss Frizzle's- there's only eight kids! Like, I counted, there's only eight kids in that entire class. I don't know if things are different in the US and like back when this show was made, but I don't think that's normal. My class sizes are like at least like 25 people, usually 30. So the idea I had for this and like why Miss Frizzle chose this particular group of kids to, you know, take on all of these adventures and give this special attention and time to is because this group of kids, this class, it's basically the class where they put all the problem children. All the kids that were either failing or being disruptive and even the ones that were like, you know, being too smart kind of. They all just shoveled them into this room and handed them to the spunky new teacher. And it was like, they're your problem now. And Miss Frizzle went, splendid! Come, children, into the volcano while I teach you how to respect and love yourself. And science! Haha, -ha, you are studying rocks? No, you are the rock. I don't know if that, like, idea is too deep for a kid's show. But like, I think it makes the most sense and it just gives like such a good opportunity to like give these kids more character. Going back to Carlos and Wanda, Carlos wasn't sent here actually for being disruptive, being a jokester and a prankster and all that kind of stuff. He developed those traits kind of as a coping mechanism because he believes he's dumb. He has undiagnosed dyslexia, 
and before Miss Rizzle's class, he just was failing everything. And so he hated school, and the only thing that he could do to, like, you know, try and make himself feel better about it was get everyone to like him. He was a class clown. Wanda, on the other hand, she's a really smart kid. She just really wants to do her own thing. She'll be, like, assigned... She'll be given this project on, like, like you know, the rain cycle, and then she'll just, like, get really into studying this one type of frog. And she'll justify it to her teacher that, well... Uh, frogs are amphibians and they like to be wet and rain is wet and also frogs are cool and maybe stop being a goober. She was also just heavily chaotic. She totally pulled and loose Nasida at one point and brought a live snake to school. Dorothy Ann is not a problem student. She was just like way too smart for her own good and she was really not doing good socially either. She was abrasive and like made all the other kids feel dumb, so they were kind of like, okay, she's not learning anything. Let's just shove her in a room. She already ignores all the other kids in her class, so she'll be able to ignore all the problem children and just do her own thing. But then she ends up making friends instead. Before I talk a little bit more about Keisha, I would like to just diss original Keisha's like clothing choices. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, but orange and pink is not where it's at. At least not those two shades. Her new design also just does not exude the correct amount of badass. Like out of all the kids, I feel like Keisha was the one that was like the most on top of it, right? Like she called it how it was and she was like, nah, this this ain't it. We're, we're leaving here. This is not the good stuff. But like not in a scary cat kind of way. She's definitely not scared of that stuff. She's just very practical about what's going on around here. But at the same time, she can also be abrasive. I think the reason that she ended up in the class is because she she challenged the teachers. The other teachers besides Miss Frizzle at that school, I don't feel like they're like they're not bad teachers, but I feel like a lot of them aren't very good teachers. And Keisha's a smart kid, so whenever she noticed that they were saying something that was wrong or, you know, usually problematic. She would speak up about that, and that got her in trouble a lot. To the point where she's not even in the class because she's struggling academically. She's in the class because the teachers just didn't want to deal with her. Arnold, my man! I am very happy with Arnold's design. I actually did take, like, a little bit of, you know, reference to his redesign, where I incorporated green a little bit more than it was before. Ginger hair and green, it's just, it goes really good together. It's very nice. You can't see the green yet, but it will show up. Anywho, I feel like Arnold would have a very similar problem to Dorothy Ann, at least in terms of, like, socially and connecting with his peers. Arnold, Arnold's got, like, severe anxiety. He was struggling academically, but only because he was in a school full of a bunch of other kids, and he was like, people are looking at me. Oh my god, I need to study for this test. Oh my god, where am I? I cannot breathe. Yet yeah, was not a good time, he was not getting the support he needs. Arnold's also just, like, low-key autistic. A lot of the kids in this class are. Like, his whole obsession, hyperfixation with rocks, he, like, even ended up in this, like, you know, super, like, snobby and serious society of, like, you know, people who, like, are really crazy about rocks, and all of it was adults. Literally, part of that episode was about the fact that he was the youngest kid to be accepted into this club, because he just loves rocks that much. It's giving tism, and we love him for that. Which really did not mix well with the anxiety. One more thing to just hammer in the autism thing though, he really did not like the spontaneous field trips. Don't know if this is 100% proven, but like whenever the field trips were planned ahead of time, he didn't have that big of a problem with them. But whenever Miss Frizzle was like, get out of your seats, we're going on a field trip. He's like, what? Why? Why now? No. But schedule! I know that's a different take on it than usual, but I also don't care. Ralphie! I have restored Ralphie's fat kid card. Let us rejoice! I have also restored his R, and his snapback is in the proper position! Moving on from my very short antidote about his design. This may shock some of you, but I think Ralphie's autistic too. At least here he is. Let me explain. Ralphie was also a kid that got sent to the problem children class because he was falling behind in school. But unlike Carlos and Arnold who like 
couldn't do well in school because they weren't given the right circumstances. Ralphie kind of just, like, chose not to do the work. He wasn't interested in anything they were teaching, and also the teachers weren't helping him with a bunch of stuff that was happening, you know, in his outside of school life. Not even outside of school, but I imagine Ralphie got bullied quite a bit. A lot of these kids did, but... The way Ralphie kind of saw it was that, you know, paying attention to stuff that he didn't care about was kind of like a favor for his teachers. But since the teachers weren't putting any effort into protecting him and all that jazz, he was like, nah, screw it. He also, like, has his autism diagnosis, and because of that, people very quickly slapped on the idea of, like, you know, kid with autism is, like, you know, little genius and stuff like that. And he was like, nah, I ain't about that. He was like, don't you tell me what I am. I'd also like to point out that, you know, especially back in the time when the show first aired, it is very strange to me that Ralphie was allowed to wear his hat in school. That has got to be some kind of comfort object. Like, they could not take that hat away from him and they made an exception. Tim is the part where I ran out of steam in terms of writing a little bit. Obviously, I want to lean in to the fact that he's an artist more and give him far more lines. Because original series Tim was, like, really neglected. Boy did not get a lot of lines, and I don't think I can think of, like, a single episode where he was the main focus. But anywho, Tim's got ADHD. He finds it very, very hard to pay attention in class and do his homework and all that jazz. He's also just, like, a very much a visual learner, and a lot of his teachers just were not... They weren't playing to that enough. So yeah, he was falling behind in school, too. And Phoebe was the new girl in school who low-key has undiagnosed autism too. Man, I am giving a lot of these characters the tism, but y'all can deal with it. I brought Phoebe back because I didn't really like the character they replaced her with. I did allude to her though with like the braid. Plus the new girl thing is like just so much more interesting. She was put in the problem child class for rocking in her chair too much. And because she had a meltdown one time during a fire drill. Ooh, we love ableism in this house. But yeah, the reason I think this storyline would be really cool is because it would, like, turn, uh, the Magic School Bus into, like, not just a show about teaching science, but also a show about, like, different learning styles and how, like, a teacher that really cares can just go such a long way. I may be getting ahead of myself just a bit, but that is just how I do. This really was supposed to just be a thing about the designs, but whoops. Anywho, I hope you guys like these designs better than whatever the hell we got in the new series.